In this short video, I will be discussing on pre-induction techniques for cervical ripening. Who are the candidates for cervical ripening? Cervical ripening is for patients with unfavorable cervixes. So, what is an unfavorable cervix? Unfavorable cervix is defined mostly according to the Bishop's score. When the Bishop's score is less than 6, it is defined as an unfavorable cervix. If the cervix is favorable, we can go ahead with induction with synthetic oxytocin for the labor. When the cervix is unfavorable, we can use two main types of cervical ripening methods. Mechanical induction methods and the pharmacological induction methods. The main mechanical induction method is endocervical balloon. We insert the endocervical balloon through the cervix to induce the cervical ripening. Polycatheters are also can be used for the mechanical induction of labor. When these balloon catheters are inserted through the cervix, the prostaglandins are secreted from the decidua and the cervix, and those prostaglandins will stimulate the cervical ripening process. There are contraindications for the polycatheter or the balloon catheter induction. When the patient is having features of called amnionitis, ruptured membranes, the patient is having placenta previa spectrum disorders. Usually, polycatheter induction is done when cervical dilatation is from 0 to 3 cm. The pharmacological induction of labor is by the prostaglandins. Prostaglandins are mainly two types, E1 and E2. Prostaglandin E1 are the misoprostols and the E2 are the dinoprostol. There are misoprostol tablets that we can use per vaginally, per rectally and also orally. And, and dinoprostol are also the same and there are dinoprostol gel that can be used vaginally. This will directly stimulate the cervical ripening process by releasing the prostaglandins. Once we start the cervical ripening process, either by mechanical interventions or pharmacological interventions, we continue the process until the cervix becomes favorable. Thank you very much.